We're going to walk through how to set up a key tracking EQ inside of Bitwig Studio. It's actually very easy and straightforward. You might just need some kind of a note to frequency chart to help you out if you're trying to pinpoint the exact frequencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a modulator. And shocker, it's going to be the key track modulator. And then I just want to kind of leave everything alone, so that will make my life a lot easier. So we can see that the root is at C3, and now this is the one thing that's kind of important. I'm going to make all of my decisions around that C3 note. You don't have to do that. You can kind of offset it, you know, do something at C2 or, or put in note effects and things if you need to, depending on the part that you played, like if it's a bass part or something. But this is the way that I'm going to go about doing it because it's just the easiest and most straightforward approach and we can get through the video faster. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to bring up the Spectrum Analyzer and let's take a look at this. And if you notice right now, the Spectrum Analyzer is not really helping me that much. I'm going to take the resolution, put it up to large, and then I'll go ahead and just freeze this. And now we get a good idea of the imprint of this sound when I hit the C3 key. So we can see that we have something here. It's being labeled at C2 around like 128, 131. Bitwig is kind of interesting in that for some reason it has offset everything by about an octave. So if you have a note to frequency chart, it's probably gonna tell you C3 is around 131, but we know that you know that's offset inside of Bitwig. So I'm actually gonna grab this fundamental frequency and I'm gonna look at my chart here real quick. And it's telling me, 131 hertz that's with me rounding up so we'll just go 131 here and then that's going to highlight over this sort of fundamental and i'm going to add a nice big huge boost to this thing just so that we can really kind of hear what's going on so now if i play a key we can hear that lower note being enhanced this is now totally static, of course, so if I play up and down the keyboard... Even a note that's just a little bit higher on the keyboard isn't ha doesn't have that same low end to it. So we're going to set up the key tracking. And now this is really simple and straightforward. I'm just going to set it to the frequency. And then we're going to use our spread value of 64. And guess what? We are now going to be key tracking. <laughs> And if you don't believe me, we'll just put this back to medium. And we can see how it's following along with that as we play up and down the keyboard. So again, if we play in something, anything other than C, if we're playing an octave lower, octave higher, really doesn't matter. This is still going to work the way that it's supposed to. So let's just set up one more. And again, I'm going to come back to playing my C3. I'm going to freeze one more time. And I guess maybe we could do something kind of interesting and we'll take this one. This is now the C4, but it will probably be C5 on our chart. And we're gonna like just really cut it almost completely out. So let's see if we can find that. So it's around 514, C5, I'm looking at this right now, 523 is what it's telling me. So we'll take this one, put it to 523 Hertz. Looks like it's lining up exactly the way we want it to. And I'll tighten this up and we're gonna go kind of crazy and just like really, really, really cut it, okay? Maybe you have another part that's like, that's the main frequency and you need to make some room for it. So there we go, I've done it. But actually that wouldn't be true. It'd have to be another like instrument part. Nonetheless, we have it set up, that's all that matters. So again, if we play a note. You'll hear as we play away from that, the, the actual like timbre of the instrument changes. It's not staying consistent, which is what we expect with the synthesizer. So I'll go ahead and take this and I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing. Good, and now when we play notes, put this back onto medium. And there you have it. That is how you would set up a key tracking 
EQ inside of Bitwig Studio. You can still use the other bands to do static things or just bring on another EQ to be static if you need it. But that is it. Let's talk about like pros and cons. I know there'll be someone in the comments who's going to say this is going to totally mess up your phase and da da da. And again, like with any technique, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So you just have to experiment with it and see if it makes sense in your situation. Also, keep in mind that you don't need to just leave this on the device itself, on the track itself. You could have another audio track or another instrument track react, do a note receiver thing and jump around based on a different part, which is a really cool idea and a way to carve out and make space, especially when it's super specific and super detailed. A lot of times if I'm like trying to target a specific kind of overtone or resonance that's annoying in a synthesizer, I'd probably use Soothe and do it on more of just like a like a broader band length because that just reacts so quickly and it's easier to set up. But this would also work for you if you're in a pinch or if you're really trying to get specific with things. So there you have it, key track EQ inside of Bitwig Studio. Thanks for watching.